Hey guys, it's Brendo ST. Bear with me a little bit. I know. Well, actually, the flash is doing pretty good on my cell phone here. This is my uh, astrophotography rig going right now. Um, I was shooting the uh, Morsehead Nebula, which you can't see. But I got the iOptron Smarty Q Pro. And I'm using a Nikon D3200. Or 3400, my bad. Uh, DSLR. Right now, I'm getting dark frames taken on the camera so it's got the cap on um, I kind of wanted to show you this so I finally found an app that uses the uh, computer to control the camera for the longest time I couldn't find an intervalometer that works with that camera finally found this app it's called uh, what is it called oh, let's scroll over this and it should tell me digicam control you can find it right on their website and right now it's taken uh, minute exposures. I got 30 frames going right now just for my dark frames, and it's about to finish my last one. <clears throat> uh, make sure because I think I have a timer going. But once this is done, I'm going to take this into the light and do some flat frames. Which for flat frames, you'd put it on uh, aperture priority mode, which is the A, uh, the A on there, and then I'll cover the I'll take the lens cap off, but cover the hood with like a white cloth, and then point at light source, which I'll go in my garage for that, and uh, <clears throat> take those. But yeah, I got uh, just under an hour on the Horsehead Nebula here, so I'm gonna put these together, and uh, we'll see how it turns out when it's done. But I'm I'm really happy I finally found this app because I've been literally the camera can only do 30 second long exposures by itself without a controller or remote and uh as you can tell right now it's windy out here so i'm hoping that didn't affect the pictures at all and it can only do nine pictures in a row uh based on the timer that's built into the camera so now that i have this computer set up here i can literally program it to do hours and hours worth of work as long as the battery lasts and literally leave it walk away and leave it and that's exactly what I did tonight, was set it for an hour worth of pictures and then let it go. So, now that that's done, we're going to go in and get my flat frames and then I'll show you how to do bias frames or offsets, is what they're called. Alright guys, I have the camera in my garage now. And as you see, I got a white t-shirt, cloth, whatever you want to call it. Just literally going to put that over the lens hood here, try to make it as flat as possible. Uh, while keeping the lens at its length. So that should be good. And then I'm going to take 25 frames at on the aperture priority mode. Leave all your other settings the same that you were shooting with. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to do 25, so it's about a good number. All right, last step here is going to be offset or bias frames. I'm going to put the camera back in manual mode. I'm going to put the lens cap back on. I like to separate my flat frames with my dark frames because the bias frames will show up black as well so when you're looking in the folder uh, it's easier to do this so what you want to do is right now i have it on bulb but you want to go to the fastest shutter speed your camera can do possible uh, mine is one four thousandths of a second and i'm just gonna make this really easy with a remote and just turn it on i'm gonna do 100 of these because they're you can do them so fast so i don't know if you need 100 of them but i'm doing 100 All right, guys, uh, now you are looking at my computer here, and these are all the files I got off the memory card of the camera. Uh, ignore this one. It was a quick image. I saw a plane going through it. But so far, I have 49 frames, so 49 minutes worth of data here. I was hoping to get more. Uh, apparently, I didn't have enough time. So... Um, I will show you. So we're using Deep Sky Stacker here. And we're gonna pull up this Horsehead Nebula. And I'm gonna pull open all these frames here. And it's gonna load them in. And I'm gonna hit dark frames and load all of our dark frames from tonight's session in. Which are here, there should be 25 of them total. Or 30 of them, I took 30 of them. 
a second, there it goes. So we have 30 frames there. We're gonna load our, excuse me, our flats. Which we have, I believe, 25 of those. All those, and then last are offsets, which I ended up with uh, 130 of them, because I wasn't counting when I uh, was hitting all that. And that's it. Make sure when you finish, hit check all. Because you want your light frames checked. For some reason, it doesn't automatically check them. But those are in. I'm going to click register checked pictures. Uh, so most of the time, you want to register already register pictures. Now, I looked through these frames already, and I got rid of the bad ones. So I can do 100% um, for the stack. I'm going to click on recommended settings here and make sure everything is to its recommended. Because... That's what I recommend, is doing what they recommend. Unless you know more of what you're doing. I'm new at this, so that's how I do it. Uh, once I see that, I'm going to do Star Detection, which is on the Advanced tab. You want, like, 150 stars is good. So I'll do 20% here. It does a count. That was 129. I should be good. Yeah. Let's go to 15, just in case here. It doesn't want to do it lower than 10%, so don't don't go pushing back. Oh, that's fine, right there. Uh, make sure that's checked, and everything else I leave the same. I don't mess with any of this stuff in here. These are all set to what they were set when I got this program. So, so I'm gonna stack, and uh, that's it. We got 49 minutes total, and we'll see what we got at the end of this. Alright guys, this is my final image after working with it in Photoshop. Um, it's it's alright compared to the images I've done before of the Horsehead Nebula. Um, it's better than them, but it still needs a lot of work. Uh, again, this was only 49 minutes of data, so I wasn't really expecting too much from that. The battery ended up dying on the camera, and also uh, Orion setting really early. Uh, around this date so I don't get much time to work with it um, but yeah this was 49 60 second intervals or 60 second uh, frames and stacked with deep sky stacker like you saw there and then I just worked with it with Photoshop with those skills that I know which isn't that much I'm, I'm really just taking things I've seen on the internet and utilizing them and really trying my best to bring out the detail without overblowing everything out and you can see there's a lot of gradient here on the sides compared to the center but you do get some of the H alpha which I'm surprised it picks up because it's not a modded camera at all and it's a very uh, like a beginner DSLR so I'm surprised it gets the stuff that I'm able to get with it but yeah uh, the ISO was 800 for all these images just in case you were wondering, my aperture was at f7.1, and I was using a 300 millimeter kit lens that comes with those cameras. Um, but yeah, uh, that's basically it. So thanks for watching this little video. Uh, I got more of these coming. Uh, every time I'm out there, I'm gonna try something new, learn more, and share what I've learned because I, I found it find it interesting and I love getting these pictures being able to take these pictures myself just blows my mind uh, but yeah there's these I'll have car videos coming um, it's a little hard with the quarantine right now so everyone's locked down and this is the only hobby that I'm actually able to do in my yard safely so <laughs> I hope everyone's staying safe out there um, and Basically waiting for humanity to beat this thing. Thanks for watching.